You're here in Japan this time uh, regarding the children's uh, lawsuit concerning children's health and safety and also demanding that the government actually evacuate all the children out of Fukushima. Um, but the Japanese government has not considered uh, the standard level or the safety, safe level of, of radiation in Japan. And, and they, they said that it's okay to, they've been saying that it's okay to, to play around in, outside. And they have, not been, they have not considered any mass evacuation out of Fukushima. What do you think about that? We do feel that the Japanese government is quite wrong, criminally wrong, in fact, n not to organize the, um, the evacuation of at least children and probably also adults from areas where the radiation levels are high, the, the contamination levels are high. Mm -hmm. Now, with, with regard to that, the, the governments are never uh, a, 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 an organization. They, also con they, they always consist of individuals. Mm -hmm. And it's the individuals in those governments that make decisions, um, that these decisions are wrong, and they fail to act on that, mm -hmm. then there are such things in the past as war crimes. Uh, in the case of the Second World War, of course, Hitler decided as a government, that the National Socialist government, that they could put the Jewish people in concentration camps mm -hmm. and gas them. Mm -hmm. These were all decisions made by government, but ultimately an individual is responsible. And, and uh, although those were considered to be war crimes, to my mind, this is equally well a war crime, mm. although it's happened in peacetime. Right. And these people who are individually responsible and can mm. be named, I mean, mm. I don't know what the names are, but mm -hmm. these people exist. Uh, ultimately, I think they may have to face some kind of, a kind of trial that would result in, in, in them going to jail for a very mm. long time. The, J the Japanese government has adopted ICRP standard model. Um, but at the, at the same time, it hasn't actually followed or protect. Uh, it hasn't actually uh, kept the ICRP warning. Uh, you have you have criticized the ICRP model. And what what your uh, stance on that toward the Japanese okay. government? Okay. Well, in, in a sense, that? the government has. Uh, remained within the constraints mm -hmm. that laid down by the ICRP because I believe that the ICRP permits uh, up to 20 millisieverts exposure in emergency situations and clearly this is an emergency situation. Mm -hmm. um, the, norm, the normal uh, uh, acceptable limit um, is, uh, is, is one millisievert but this, this is from all sources and, uh, and, and most interpretations of this, for instance in the United States and in Europe, uh, reduce that down to about 0.1 millisievert for exposure from a single source. Mm -hmm. um, but anyway, whichever way you look at it, the Japanese government has permitted people already mm -hmm. to be exposed to higher levels than 1 millisievert. And mm -hmm. my own belief, having done these air filter experiments, uh, is that probably a very large number of people will have been exposed higher than 20 millisieverts mm -hmm. from internal radionuclides. Wow. Yeah. The, the Japanese government is completely out of order. Mm. Uh, in, in making the decisions that, it, that it's made. And, and, if, and as I said in the last uh, answer, if it continues now that it has this information from the ECRR model mm -hmm. and from the measurements that we've made, it, it continues to pursue this course of action, then I believe that it's acting uh, in, in some criminal sense, in some sense uh, uh, as a criminal organization mm. and ultimately will be, will be brought to justice in some right. way. Right. You said that there is a difference between ICRP between the actual and models, yes, the there, there models. is a difference, yeah. Uh, well. Could you explain that a little bit, uh, okay. what, why it's... Uh... Okay. Well, the, the first thing you have to know is that the ICRP model doesn't work. So if you predict the number of cancers after an exposure to internal radionuclides, you get the wrong answer. Well, the ICRP model uh, was set up in 1952, and DNA wasn't discovered until 1953. Mm -hmm. The ICRP uh, was, asked, uh, was set up in order to, uh, to look at the health effects of the radiation exposures from the manufacture of atom bombs. Mm -hmm. That's what it was for. That, uh, the, because after the, sec after the Second World War, there was a massive expansion in the manufacture of atom bombs, and plutonium and uranium and all these substances which were like normally not there mm -hmm. were being released all over the place. So the ICRP had to quickly figure out 
how to deal with this. Mm -hmm. And so the way in which they did it was, 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 was take a, a physics-based approach. So and they're mostly physicists, because it was physicists who do this stuff. Mm -hmm. And to a physicist, the, the easy, what you do is you, is you reduce everything to the simplest format right. in order to get a mathematical equation. Because you can't write down a mathematical equation about a person. It's too complicated. Mm. So what they did is they turned a person into a bag of water. And then they, they said that the exposures had to be uh, um, regulated on the basis of the amount of energy that was, w was trans transmitted into the bag of water. It's kind of simple. Right. And it was very easy to do that. It's a very simple model. You, you have a bag of water in the shape of a person, you put a thermometer inside it, yeah. you fire radiation in it, and you see if the temperature goes up. Right. And that, that enables you to, 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 to define absorbed dose. All right. But the model actually is uh, ICRP because it's uh, because it's promoting or from their point of view from their promoting uh, the the promoting nuclear energy nuclear uh, power well plants they wouldn't say no they wouldn't say that they're promoting anything they would right. say that they're an independent structure of of scientists who independently assess the risks from radiation. Mm. They would never ever say that they're promoting nuclear power. Right, but that that's it's just how it happens. It's just how it works out. This all happens behind the scenes. Mm. Actually, I mean, many of us believe that they were originally set up to promote nuclear weapons, mm. or rather not to promote them, but to prevent people from stopping their development. That's mm. what it was about. So all those people who said, oh, look, you know, there's all this strontium-90 in the milk and little Jimmy's got leukemia, mm -hmm. they could say, well, it's nothing to do with the nuclear weapons because we, we can tell you that the doses are too low. Right. That's what it was originally about. And when the doctors started to complain about this, mm -hmm. what they did is they constrained the doctors. So in 1959, they forced the WHO to, into an agreement with the IAEA, mm -hmm. whereby the IAEA was responsible for radiation and health. Mm -hmm. The International Atomic Energy Agency mm -hmm. was responsible for health. And the WHO, the World Health Organization, was, was not allowed to, to, to think about radiation. It mm -hmm. had to think about mosquitoes and, and, right. and stuff, you know, and AIDS. Mm. Yeah. So there was a quite clear distinction there. Hmm. So that was almost proof, if you like, that, 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 it was, uh, that, the, that the ICRP was there to kind of like control the understanding of risk. And, th and they still are. That's still where they are. And is that, why, is that why the standard, their model, is set up not to... Uh, Look at internal this, radiation. Their safety level, right? Yes, yeah, sure. Not. I believe so. Of course, they would never admit it. Right. I just wanted to ask you about the, your past experience with testifying in court in similar cases. Uh, you said that you have testified more than 40 times, maybe across the world. Yes. I've done quite a few court cases in which I've used the ECR model mm -hmm. um, to act as an expert witness for people who've been harmed by radiation mm -hmm. exposure, internal radiation. Mm -hmm. uh, a number of different examples in the United States, people who worked with radioactive substances, people who lived near a nuclear power station, uh, people who lived near a nuclear site in Los Angeles was mm -hmm. one. Um, and in the United Kingdom, I'm, I'm an expert witness on a number of court cases and tribunals relating to uh, veterans of the nuclear atomic That's testing. Right. That's right. Now, all of these, what they all have in common mm -hmm. is that these people have suffered, uh, developed cancer mm -hmm. uh, or leukemia, uh, and this was following the uh, internal exposure to exactly the same sort of substances that we're talking about here right. in Japan. And in every one of those cases, uh, we have succeeded. Mm -hmm. uh, that, and so, the, the, so if you like to see it as a sort of a boxing match or some kind of contest mm -hmm. between the ICRP and the ECRR. Mm -hmm. uh, I have to say that if you put that in court mm -hmm. with, um, with a jury mm -hmm. or with an unbiased judge or mm -hmm. with a tribunal of three judges, they always find in favor of the ECRR uh, um, right. interpretation and never in favor of the ICRP. And yeah. indeed, the defense in all of these cases have, have singularly failed to bring any expert witnesses in, into court mm -hmm. to, to, um, to uh, to testify that the ICRP model is right. Because actually it's really quite difficult to testify that it's right, right since all of the evidence shows that it's wrong. Mm. And in a court, you rely on the evidence. So mm. it's no good saying, hey, this is the ICRP and everybody believes it, and look at this guy, he's, you know, he's the head of the ICRP and isn't he important and all of mm. that stuff. Because mm. in court, that doesn't, that doesn't cut any ice. You mm. know? So if you had a chance, and if, you, if uh, the Japanese plaintiffs invited you to, oh sorry, uh, 
the Japanese plaintiffs. In the Koryama case. In Koryama yeah. case, they invited you over to testify. Right. Would you do that? Well, I will, I'm quite happy to testify and produce a report on right. this right. as an expert witness. And if I were going to testify, I would want to testify by video link. I absolutely don't want to go anywhere near this, because having seen what I've seen about the radiation levels, I, I'm too frightened mm. to go closer to, uh, to this site than about 100 kilometers. And even 100 kilometers, I'm not too happy about. I was in Eizu Wakabatsu, and the, the, there was sig the significant amount of radioactivity on the ground there, mm -hmm. which I didn't expect. I've right. been quite shocked by the amount that I found here. Uh, and I noticed it this morning. I sat down in the in the hotel, and I'm looking out over Tokyo. Mm -hmm. And everybody's going around their business. People with umbrellas, and yeah. young women, and men with all their white uh, and mm -hmm. so on. And it all it looks perfectly normal. Right. And at Azu Wakamatsu, it looks perfectly normal. Mm -hmm. Probably, if you went within five kilometres of the actual accident site, it would look perfectly normal. You wouldn't see anything. Mm -hmm. But actually, what you have there is, um, is an enormous amount of radioactivity and a lot of particles floating around the place that, that can kill you, and you just right. can't see them. Right, exactly. And you don't know that they're there, because you don't have eyesight that mm. see ra radioactivity, and unless you carry a Geiger counter, right. you can't measure it. Right. And even if you carry a Geiger counter, you can be misled by the fact that it's saying so many microsieverts per hour, mm. when in reality what the problem is, is is nothing to do with the microsieverts per mm. hour. It's the stuff that produces the microsieverts per hour that's floating about in the air, mm. and then it goes inside you. So, so this is the, the, when you know this, you don't want to go very close to these places. A lot of my colleagues are dead. Right. They went to Chernobyl. We would like to ask. We would like to ask you uh, the results from your car filter experiment. Okay. Uh, just briefly mention right. that. And okay. So, so I have to say that first of all, this is quite. Um, this is just preliminary results. We mm -hmm. have had. F f we've looked at five car filters. Mm -hmm. Uh, one of them from Chiba City and four of them from somewhere along the 100 kilometer uh, mark. Mm -hmm. But one of them drove within 30 kilometers of, of the plant. Mm -hmm. um, and what they show is that all of the Fukushima ones show higher levels than the, than the Chiba City one. Right. But the Chiba City one still is quite high. Mm -hmm. so, uh, and, what they, and they all contain uh, gamma emitting isotopes which are certainly from the plant. And the evidence is also that they contain uranium, but it's, mm. it's a little bit more difficult to be sure about the uranium. Mm. In addition to that, w uh, one, of the f one of the filters we tested for alpha, alpha particles, and what this shows is that they do contain alpha emitters mm. and at least one uh, alpha emitting particle, which was about 0.5 millimeter diameter. Mm -hmm. So that's what we found. We, we, we are also, of course, um, they, they are still being analyzed with more sophisticated equipment to look mm -hmm. for plutonium, and we'll know about that in a couple of weeks' time. So then the question is, what does that mean? It means, basically, it means that the concentration in air of cesium-137 is about 1,000 times higher mm -hmm. than it was at the top of the nuclear weapons testing in 1963. Wow. Okay. So that is really quite serious, because mm -hmm. we know that the nuclear weapons testing in 1963 caused an increase in infant mortality and caused a cancer epidemic 20 years later. Right. But this is 1,000 times higher than that. Mm -hmm. um, and in Chiba City it was 300 times higher than that, mm -hmm. so the ratio is about 3 to 1. Mm -hmm. Which makes me feel that probably their significant uh, radioactive exposures to the south of Tokyo, you know, so further away mm -hmm. even. Yeah, the, the final thing that we seem to see, seems to show is that the radioactivity is is not uniformly distributed. Mm -hmm. We kind of knew that anyway, but right. this 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 confirms it. So there's some parts, some areas where it's quite high, mm -hmm. some areas where there's not very much of it. And this is exactly like Chernobyl. So mm -hmm. if you look at maps of the contamination on the ground from Chernobyl, it's rather like a leaf shape with lots mm -hmm. of lobes coming out, mm -hmm. uh, and they tend to go along river valleys. So that's what we found there. And now, so what, what, what do we no do next? Right. Well, what, what has to, a number of things, but, but the first thing is that people who live in these areas where the radioactivity is, is, is high, mm -hmm. where these air concentrations are high, uh, should leave. And in particular, the children should be got out, because children are, are more, um, up to 10 times more sensitive to radiation. Right. Uh, and of course, they're not going to suddenly die, but all, this, all of this stuff is mm. going to happen sometime in the future, but mm -hmm. it certainly is going to happen. So it is, uh, it is already an assault on these people in, in a sort of legal sense, mm -hmm. and they should get, they, uh, and, but if they get out now, then it won't get any worse, right. yes? 
Um, so that's the first thing. The second thing is the government must uh, urgently overfly the area and mm -hmm. produce accurate radiation density maps, mm -hmm. which, is, which, which is old technology. 